whale vivisection. Remarkably, each specimen I had the pleasure of studying during the voyage possessed some minor variance in physiology. On the second leg of the trip, east of Tivia, the crew hauled aboard a female, some 42 feet in length. I estimated she weighed 35 tons and the ship sat low, rocking side to side Jesus. rocking side to side through the night with her thrashing. By candlelight Yeah, but by candlelight I took her apart, sketching and taking notes. Against her bellowing, I cut into the mass of tentacles around her mouth. Within I found row upon row of teeth, and a baleen running along the upper jaw. Through this broom like structure, I assume she filtered from the f- food from the water that was too small to be chewed. So one the more nautically inclined among you may have noticed, hey, whales don't have tentacles. So, so clearly this is not whales as we know them. And also, it, it comes up again later, the process of harvesting the whale oil from these whales, it has to be done while they're alive. So, yeah. Not, not pleasant. Whale oil processing. <laughs> Out at sea, they secure the beast with hooks, with lines cast from the main ship and from several smaller boats. Buoys keep the whale from diving deep. Once it's caught... A larger hook is driven through the tail, which is used to hoist the creature up through the chute. They moan and bellow for some time as the men get them onto the deck, then lift them onto the scaffolding scaffolding over over scaffolding overhead. They also speak coherent English on these ships because orders couldn't be transmitted otherwise. Sorry. Okay. No. The ship adjusts its prow and returns to port in Dunwall, where the crew works on the great creature, sliding off the fattiest parts while it still lives. Yeah. Is there any? reason it has to live, or does it say? I, I think there's some implica- indications later that like you get more energy out of it, or something weird. Mm. So it's a society run on cruelty. Yes. Whale oil refilling station. Sokolov no longer has the upper hand re- in re- with regard to supplies of whale oil. The good admiral has paid for the installation of my own system, which will enable me to work in this place. The oil, disp- oil tank dispenser, when activated, will produce an empty vessel for filling. When the empty tank is held near the oil tank refill pump, the magnetic attractor should take the tank and lock it in the correct configuration. Using the lever will begin the refilling process. Once refilling is complete, the tank can be removed and placed in service. Extreme caution must be used in handling the full tanks. They are quite unstable. The system is sound and well-engineered. It appears that the Greaves Oil Company has done something correctly for once. (laughs) Yeah, the whole thing about the tanks being unstable, that will come into play. Audiograph. Pressure and the cold are too much to endure without it. I speculate that a human being might, by a process of adaptation, produce high energy humors in the body. I could build a tank that would slowly increase pressure on a subject over a long period of time and then observe for years, if need be, to see if the formulation of energetic substances developed. Surely the Empress would be able to furnish me with facilities, subject and the necessary legal amnesty. Research ethics in Dunwall are not quite up to modern standards. No, I can't imagine they are. My break with the Academy Ugh. was explosive, for lack of a better word. I had to rebuild from scratch, but Ugh. so much the better. I was sick of using tools made by lesser men. I, 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 just, I just see no. Chucky now. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're saying? You're wearing the mask right now, right? Yes. I believe so. Okay. Yes. Can we pull the switch? And. Yeah, whale oil. Dunwall whale oil is blue. Alright, and. Remember what it said about instability? You must have known Sokolov at court. Clever, yes, but fundamentally a second rate. Isn't this stuff valuable? Yeah. Pietro is so big. What? I am a man of talent. Oh! Genius needs a patron. I have been fortunate to ally with men like the Admiral and yourself. All right. Now, basically, I need to go to. I need to hit the sack to get some sleep. It's been a hard day of killing. Hard day's murder. You've met Piero. Good. You'll want to get some rest now. You'll be needed soon.
There's a bit more exploring to do in this place. River traffic is forbidden from landing in the distillery district due to risk of infectious contact. Violators will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. Yeah, well, later on we see the flooded district and you find out just how badly you do not want to go there. It's Lydia. She's Hi. one of the workers here. You must be Corvo. <clears throat> I am Lydia. At your service. Your room is upstairs and ready. When they told me who it was, well, somebody not you'd be old completely old. alarned by your mask. Yeah, maybe they warned her. Or I don't know. Maybe maybe patrons at this bar wear masks a lot. Litany on the white cliff. And I say to you, brothers, it is here that we make our stand as a righteous force. Oh, it's an excerpt from a series of overseer invocations by High Overseer Abram Templeton. So he's like the head of their religion, basically. <clears throat> and I say to you, brothers, it is here that we make our stand as a righteous force against the growing darkness. It is here that we unite against the spirits of the unknown that would drag us screaming into the night, never to return to our homes, to our families. Together we will serve as a rod to those who would stray from the herd. For the foggy gray wa for the foggy gray wastes of the outsider, we will burn a bright fire with our virtuous actions so that others will not lose their way. And to those who choose to wander beyond the walls of our homes, in far places, we will strike at them swiftly before they whisper to their neighbors, filling their hearts with strangeness and doubt. Yeah, basically, their religion is sort of obsessed with the idea that the, this being called the Outsider is trying to constantly trying to corrupt people. <laughs> like I said, he's like so he's like sort of their equivalent of like the devil. Harpooner's songs. This is this is basically you know that song you always hear guys singing around as they go. Oh yeah, familiar. this is. What do you do, 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 do? It's an adaptation of a real sea shanty. Yeah, that's the um the one. It's from the, here in the trailer. Yeah, sung by the little girls. It was all creepy. Yeah. Is there anything creepier than a singing child? Seriously. Lots of singing children. Oh God. <laughs> the young prince of Tivia. Excerpt from a theater play. Lord Nathan Boyle, shaking with outrage. How dare you, sir, clothed so in my very home. I should hand you over to the watch, depraved Tivian. Prince Kalasar, moving closer. That's a harsh welcome for royalty, my lord. Your daughter treated me with much more hospitality. Alas, she has gone out for the evening, leaving me all alone. Lord Nathan Boyle, stammering, studying the younger man before him. What are you doing? Leave this house. Go back to your frozen wasteland, pale rascal. Prince Kalasar, smiling coyly, reaching out. No need for anger between us, Lord Boyle. Is it so wrong for me to be here? As I've proven, I've developed an affinity for you and your family. Seems like a very friendly guy, this Prince Kalasar. I don't know. Lord Nathan Boyle, gasping. Oh my, Kalasar, your skin is so warm. It burns. Okay. That's... And it ends there, sadly. <laughs> that reminds me of that, um... The, from Oblivion. <clears throat> well, the Shadow on Bitterleaf, excerpt from a longer work of fiction. Finding my way by the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise, esoteric patterns, knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer, until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume. You too have been unfaithful, and now it is your turn to be mended. Hmm. This uh, this is like some sort of steampunk human centipede, I guess. <laughs> a Gaffer's Tale, Volume Two. Excerpt from the travel journal of a whaler in his final years. After more than a quarter of a century, I am done with whaling. Too broken to continue. I've seen all the corners of the Isles and made more coin than most men see in a lifetime. But it's all gone. I've lived through an emperor and watched his daughter take the throne. Fair young empress she was, but slain so young. Everything beautiful comes to die. I've eaten in every port of the known world and sailed in the loneliest waters you could imagine. I've seen the cliffs around Pandicia. Even the best of it doesn't give me an ounce of joy. The years come back across my dreams as a line of butchered bodies, long, sleek, and singing among the waves under the moonlight. 
only to be scar speared by ugly, weather-scarred men who'd knife each other for a good pair of boots. Each year I had less time to come home. My, my tongue forgot the language of small chatter, and those who lived in the cities thought me odd. My sister Nina hardly knew what to say to me during our visits. When she lost her business to the Lord Regent's crooked barrister, I was a hundred miles east, off, east of Morley. Gaff hand, frozen from the sleet as we tracked the first bull we, whale we'd seen in days. I helped her as much as I could, but Nina died in the early days of the plague. None of it mattered. If I'm jaded and bitter, it's because... Well, okay, never mind. But you mentioned... Pan All lost like tears in the rain. <laughs> now, he mentioned pan... You, you heard him mention Pandicia? Yeah. That will, come up, that will come up again later. Pandicia is a... Basically, an, a, a continent in the world of Dishonored. Beyond the Empire. People say he killed the Empress. Of course he didn't. People are foolish and believe whatever they're I told. really wished okay. that the, the Admiral trust song, and so will the I. Whaler song, was Whalers on the Moon. That would have been awesome. Please follow we carry a harpoon. But there ain't no whales. Nope. Oh. Tell our tales. I, I'm even stealing from, the, from this place itself now. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Pleased to meet you, Master. Here's Lord Pendleton. I saw you at court in... Does he have a Happy goatee? Days. No. Might not remember. I Did can't I imagine this guy being able to grow old facial old hair, old honestly. <laughs> Back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. Hmm. I'll just eat that. Oh, let's use it. My furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. You don't talk bad about the Samuel. have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which. Wallace! Please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well, I'll begin again tomorrow. Pendleton's kind of a dick, in case you haven't guessed. Yeah, I did ask if he had a goatee. No. <laughs> Number one trait of traitors. Oh. Let's see what's in here. This is, this is the Admiral's room. Admiralty and the fleet. While each, each of the Isles has some form of naval fleet, none is more envied than that of Gristol, with its long, proud history of great ships and the Admirals who command them. Boys come of age in the cities of Gristol, hoping to someday captain such a ship, and family dynasties are made by those captains who track down infamous pirates or crush seditious uprisings, as during the mm -hmm. Morley insurrection. In times of war and peace, Gristol continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sokolov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing, even as the ship returns to Dunwall. The crews can be seen working on their latest whale as the ship moves slowly up the Brenhaven River, coming to dock with one of the powerful warehouse companies, such as the Greaves Whaling House. Suspended in the rigging overhead and backlit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of these creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the industrial heart of the capital city. Now that, the Morley insurrection, that's something we'll be hearing about again. They don't go into a huge amount of detail, but there was some sort of, Morley is one of the four isles of the Empire, main islands of the Empire, and there was some sort of rebellion there, I guess generations ago, that had a big effect on history. Mm. Just whale oil sitting in there. Oh, Gaffer's Tale Part 1, remember we saw Part 2 of this. Let's see how the saga begins. Yeah. Exit from the Travel Journal of a Young Whaler. My sister Nina and I left Tivia together, saying goodbye to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood. Leaving behind our home city of Yarrow and the cold, but beautiful white landscapes we'd always known, we boarded a ship for Dunwall. Our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we had spent the half of this getting to the capital city and establishing a small import shop dedicated to Tivian furs. Once I'd helped Nina establish the business, I was free to pursue my dream. Signing on with a whaling ship was the most exciting thing I'd ever done, and I saw it as a as a means to an end. Hold on. Someday I would captain my own crew, and eventually own a fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the gaffer, I got to see the tracking and killing of the great beasts up close. Nothing had ever fired my spirits, so, as the wind and pounding waves, racing after a wounded whale, being pulled by a skein of cables embedded in its thick flesh. I, charged, I changed more in those first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Whaling was beginning to put its mark on me so that Nina barely, barely recognized me when I returned. Tanned and sinewy with muscle, weather creases already wrinkling the corners of my eyes. But she could see that I was filled with joy, having found my purpose. 
Okay, now remember remember how downbeat part the you know the conclusion was like that career was not kind to him in the end.